Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nila. So this is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube covering all aspects of the game and aims to provide insights and resources to help you improve your game. In today's episode, we will take a closer look at an in-game build for Cold Liquefaction. This is a tech that maybe some people are neglecting, but is really powerful when building big bases as it turns useless coal into useful oil. The build I'm presenting is tileable, which means that you can place them right next to each other to form a superstructure and save on the expensive beacons and modules. Let's dive in. Each Factorio Masterclass starts as a workshop session streamed live on my Twitch channel. This is over at twitch.tv slash nilos and you're very welcome to drop by. This is usually on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central European time. Feel free to drop by and help decide, design and discuss upcoming guides. And remember, our collaborative designs are always superior to what I could have built myself. And every time I learn something new about the game, which I think is pretty damn amazing. If you like this type of video, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you have ideas, comments or feedback, you're very welcome to leave a comment below or join our Discord server. So you found a nice coal patch somewhere out in the world and you want to hook it up and then it dawns on you, what am I going to use coal for in the late game? And the answer is of course, coal liquefaction. Let's start by looking at the tech. Coal liquefaction. Here it is. This requires purple science and advanced oil processing, which makes sense. So this is later game i would recommend that you do this after you build your initial oil setup and if you have any doubts about how to set up oil then i have a master class called oil processing that i would highly recommend because that will solve all of your oil needs so this is a matter of when you're in the late game and you scale up the base you want more yeah so let's take a look at this recipe this tech only contains one recipe and this recipe is honestly a bit different from pretty much anything else and maybe because it's different, that's why some people are skipping it because it's more complicated to build. The basic concept is that you convert coal into oil with a bias towards the heavy oil. And unlike the advanced oil processing that you can see here, this oil processing is heavily skewed towards light oil and petroleum, while the coal liquefaction is skewed heavily towards heavy oil. The design I'm working on will convert all of the heavy oil into light oil and into petroleum. The reason I'm doing this is because at the end of the game, when you're out building outposts, you will need a lot more petroleum and that will be your bottleneck. You will need it for some of the things that you will continuously consume, such as plastic and sulfuric acid. So those we need to scale up when you're going to a mega base build. And that's where the cold liquefaction really comes into its own. Now for the build I'm, uh, I'm going to design here and demonstrate to you, I'm not including a split for light oil or for lubri lubricant. The reason I'm not doing that is because this is already covered during my normal oil processing and you do not need to scale lubricant. Let's start looking at the actual builds. So the first thing we need, let's build some power. We're going to need one of these. Let's go in and hit the coal liquefaction. Now, now we can look at the recipe. So the recipe is 10 coal in, 25 heavy oil in, and 50 steam in. So you need a lot of coal, which is, comes on a belt, and you need also two inputs of liquids, steam being one of them, it's quirky as well. And then you have the heavy oil output and the light oil and the petroleum output. These are similar, the outputs are similar to where they would be placed on the advanced oil processing. Now, since this one has both Inputs and outputs. The input is obviously less than the output. Then you need to have some way in the design to prioritize that the output goes into the input first. You can do that by, for example, having a pump here before moving the rest of it somewhere else. But this is a very important design principle here. You must be able to, you must make sure that the output heavy oil does not get consumed by light, by heavy oil cracking, but that it will prioritize going into to continue the cycle. Otherwise it will run dry and the whole thing will stop. Before we just go really into it, let me explain a very interesting quirk about productivity modules in this. So normally when you're dealing with productivity modules, you're going to get the output. And then when the yellow bar here progresses, you will get the productivity you'll get the productivity, which will be one 
extra bonus output here. However, there is a special quirk with recipes that include the same product as input and output. That is actually cold liquefaction and the Covarex refinement process. In that case, you do not get the full 90 heavy oil as a productivity bonus. You only get the difference 65 heavy oil. So every time the yellow productivity bar goes up, you will get 10 petroleum gas, 20 light oil and 65 heavy oil. That's really important when you start calculating ratios because it will skew your ratios if you think you get the 90 heavy oil as a productivity bonus. Now this build I'm working on, I want to create, is going to be consuming a full blue belt of copper. So in order for us to do that, I always want to have full productivity wherever possible. Let's hook up more power. And that means we need to get some beacons. Look at the new beacons here. And of course, speed modules in here, but that's not going to be enough. We are also going to do it on the top side here, which is going to require more power there. So what we have now is four of these at speed 5.55. What this means is that this will consume 44.4 coal per second. I'm going to just say that's a full blue belt and uh, don't care about the 0 0.6 remaining. Let's take a look at the inputs and outputs of this build. We're using max rate calculator to get a summary. This summary says the maximum it can consume 44.4 inbound. It consumes 222 steam. Let's deal with the steam first. I can leave this one up here. So we're going to have to do some steam. Steam comes from boilers. Each boiler is producing 60 per second. So I need four of these in order to match the 222. So four boilers are okay. We're going to deal with fuel later on. So that's one input. We're also going to get a belt inbound here with coal. You can see it's prepared out here and we can build that later. The output here is three, 486 output minus the 111. That's 375 output heavy oil. And that needs to be consumed. On top of that, we have 115 light oil and a meager 58 petroleum. Now everything needs to be converted down to petroleum because that's our desired output. So we have the input here on steam. We also have the input here on coal. We we'll, can deal with that later. So let's deal with the next part. We now need to build enough heavy oil cracking in order to consume all of the heavy oil. One, two, three, four. I will convert these. These are heavy oil cracking. They will need some modules. There we go. And they're also going to need some power. There we go. We'll also need some beacons. Let's take some beacons in here. That is going to be enough. And then I'm going to get that one up here. So this, these ones are 4.55 speed and I want all of them to be 4.55 speed. So I can take this one and move it down there. Now you'll see this one is now 4.55 and I want all of these to be 4.55. What has happened is actually this one has gotten one extra module, this one. And this is now speed 6.5, 6.05. I want this to be 5.5 in average. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to take this one out. That means this one is 0 0.5 crafting speed too low. You can see that over on the right hand side. And this one is 0 0.5 crafting speed too high. That means on average, it's still consuming. I'll do this part. Still consuming 44.4, which is our desired. And this one was now consuming 364 per second. So now you will, if you remember the numbers, and I know it's getting complicated with all these numbers flying around, but there is a, a residual output here of 11 heavy oil per second. This must be consumed. If you're not consuming this heavy oil, then the whole thing will eventually jam. So funnily enough, it just so happens that if I build that here and I built that one, a chemical plant using heavy oil, no beacon, no modules, very important, but affected by one beacon, then it will produce enough, heavy, enough solid fuel to keep these fed and it will consume exactly, and I mean exactly, the residual we need. 
Now this thing is perfectly balanced and will get rid of all the heavy oil we have. Let's move on to the light oil then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All of these will be light oil cracking. There, they will of course need modules. There we go. No, no. And they will need beacons. Yeah, they need to be fully beaconed. See, they're all now, uh, they're all now nothing because they don't need have the power. So let's get the power up as well here. They are now all speed 4.55 maximum beacon utilization. And if we look at it, <clears throat> this will consume 477. And the total production between this one and that one is going to be 470. So I have a an excess capacity for light oil consumption of seven per second, which is pretty damn close to an optimal ratio. So I'm very happy with this. And we are now producing 411, 414. It will be slightly less because it can't produce all this. But I got the numbers. And there we have it. These are all the entities we need. And you might think that that's a random pattern we have set it up in, but there is actually merit to this. Now, all we need to do, and I'm just saying this uh, a bit sarcastically, all we need to do is just place the pipes and the belts. Now, this is where the blueprint comes in. I've placed, built all of this manually, and uh, with a bit of luck, it will superimpose the blueprint when I uh, stamp it down. Let's give it a shot. It absolutely does. So before we stamp it down, let's have a look at what's going on. So basically the only thing that gets placed is belts and pipes. And it's gonna be an awful spaghetti mess, but it is there is a point to it. So stamp it down. And we now have our build completed. It's not hooked up, so it hasn't started yet. Before we do that, let's take a look at some of the quirks of this build. So that you're aware of the decisions that were made and why they're so important. Let's start with the input for the coal liquefaction. There must be two inserters here because you cannot, each of these is consuming 11.1 .1 per second and a stack inserter with full stack bonus cannot handle 11 per second from a moving belt. It can do that from a box, but not from a moving belt. Hence, you must have two inserters here. Alternatively, you have to have two inserters from the belts into a box and then go from a box into here. But this one is what I'm doing. So that gives us the coal inbound. The next weird quirk here is right that one. You can see that I'm outputting here on the on a red belt. It could also be a yellow belt, but it must be a slower belt than a blue belt. Because if this inserts on a blue belt, it'll move too fast for this blue inserter to pick it up. The reason why I built it so convoluted and I just moved it out one tile is because if you look at the substation here, it exactly covers this tile, but it does not cover the next tile. So it's a matter of just optimizing for power poles as well. But this is important. This must be a slow belt in order to do this. If you use a full belt, then eventually this one will saturate the belt and then this one will start. But it means it'll take longer time for it to stabilize. And we wanna get it stable as fast as possible. You can see here, the steam goes in goes all the way out there in order to go back in on this line, which is a bit curled up, but that's how it has to be in order to fit into insert us here. Let's trace the water. Let's actually trace the water by hooking up the water because then it will light up what is in the water and it doesn't start anything. So we have the water coming in. You can either have it coming in from the left hand side or the right hand side. What happens here, it goes in through our boilers. It goes all the way up and goes into all of our light oil cracking. The heavy oil cracking gets fed by this very weird thing. And you may be tempted to say, hey, how about just doing that one? But the answer is no, because this, I'm working on a tileable grid and therefore I have to do it like this. You will, it will all make sense eventually. As you can see, we trace here the petroleum. The petroleum goes out on this belt, nope, on this pipe, goes up and in, and merges with the output of the light oil cracking and goes out. The light oil goes up, merges here, goes down there into this collective pipe, which is both the output of the heavy oil cracking and the input for the light oil cracking. So by doing this, I'm sharing this pipe 
and thereby saving space. And they go up here. That's also why I put these distance in because now they are aligning up here. The heavy oil, that's the more convoluted one. The heavy oil comes out from all of these, goes up into this collective one. There are no pumps. I did mention that you have to make sure that it does not get cracked immediately. This is not really a problem in this build because it is so finely balanced that if this one was, if I had an extra beacon here, there would be a chance that these could over consume. But at this point, because it is so well balanced, it will not be able to over consume. Additionally, it goes out on this one and then it goes through this, which is in the middle of where it goes. It comes out of these refineries and then means it'll go here, which will go to the lower pipe and go back in. No pressurized needed. You can put in a pump here, but I guarantee you it's not necessary. So after that is done, this one is close here. So that one will always get some. The residual will flow this very convoluted way down here, down here, down here, and then into the light oil cracking. The distance for the furthest light oil or heavy oil cracking is actually what is got part of the balancing because there is a shorter pipe distance from the outputs to the inputs than there is from the output of heavy oil all the way down here and over there to that one. Therefore, because the way pipes work, they'll just spread out gradually into a nearby pipe sections. It will go in here before it will go into that one. And we can see that once it's hooked up. For that reason, there is an implicit prioritization of the refinery input compared to the heavy oil cracking. And that's actually important when we start tiling this. Now this build looks strange. I am fully aware of it, but it'll be really beautiful in a while. Now, all we need to do is hook this one up and that means inputting water, coal, make sure the output is continuous and then seed it with some heavy oil. We've already set in input the water. So let's input the coal as well. You can see here, they start grabbing. And there we go. So they are all now ready to go. Water is input. And I have a fixed consumer for the light for the petroleum outbound. Now I've done some testing for this and you can actually see this with as little as five barrels, heavy oil barrels. So you want to seed it from this side so that it goes into the solid fuel first and into this part as well. So let's put it up here, make it inbound take my five, put them in, and that's done. Then let's see what happens. I'm getting some fuel in here. It's not a lot, but it's going to be something. It's going to be enough to keep some of these ro rolling here. And these ones, you can see that there's just, they're just flaring up once in a while, just a bit. They are flaring. It's going to be slow, but it's going to get there. What comes in will continuously here. This one is continuously building. That's the most important part because that gives us the steam that we need and you can see they're flaring up more often than not than before and still the way that this works the first two will be working we are not right now having three of them operational that means i'm producing 180 steam per second the last one isn't quite done yet it'll we'll have to wait until it it is allowed there we go now it's working now i'm getting 100 and uh, 240 steam per second and I'm consuming 222. That means the steam here should be eventually starting to scale up or starting to fill up. But you can already see here steam is no longer a problem. They're all working continuously. All working continuously. We go over to these. They're all working continuously. Uh, right now this one isn't actually working completely continuous. The reason why it's not doing that is because this is still fully operational. This will not need to be fully operational once it reaches a steady state. When this belt is fully loaded with solid fuel and this one has an internal buffer of solid fuel, then it'll slow down the, the consumption. And once that happens, these will be working 99% of the time. You can see all of these are huffing and puffing with only extremely small red indicators here because I'm producing 
almost enough as, as we can hear. So this is the setup. It's all operational. It's working really well. Now you may think that this looks a bit quirky and you could build something that looks better yourself. However, there is a point to it and the point will be revealed shortly. But before we do that, let me just take a moment to thank all of the Patreon supporters who are supporting me and the work I do here on the channel. It means the world to me that there are so many people who choose to support this work and that allows me to make videos like this and continue to be a full-time content creator. So thank you very much to all of you who are supporting me. And if you want to support the channel and the work I do, then head on over to Patreon. Thank you very much. Let's go back to our original scenario. We have a giant coal patch somewhere out in the world and you're wondering how do I make useless coal into useful oil? And now we have the tool, we have our blueprint, but in this case, you know, don't just have one lane in, you have multiple. In this case, I just put four in. So of course I've made some preparations, but let's just uh, take our blueprint, stamp it down, boom, like this. Robots come flying in and build it for us. Let's zoom in a bit so we can see what's going on. I am going to, as usual, we have water is coming in, coal is coming in. What we need is we need to seed it. And because I want this to seed faster, I'm going to set 10 in here so that we can seed it faster. And you can see the whole thing is flickering on. Go, 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 go. And they are working. So once we get to a certain point where we feel this says this is actually producing stuff, then we can start feeding into the next one. So once we have this one, this is the single one that's consuming a full line. It is not f consuming a full line yet because these are not fully saturated or they're not fully working. You can see the flames here for this one, for example, is not consistent or not continuous, but it will be soon enough. As soon as it is, this one's good. That one's working. There's gonna be something in here. What we can do now is start just building more. And this is where the beauty comes in. Stamp down like this. It completely tiles and you now have shared beacons between these. And the waterline that looked quirky before is now making a lot more sense because it just became part of the next one. It's also really important to see that what we're having here is that the line above and the line below, the line below for this one becomes the line above for that one, which means this output is now even more pushing into the top here. So this one will easily do what, what it needs to be done here. Now I can just go on. This one isn't even done yet, but I don't really feel so worried about doing this. I'm just stamping down the next blueprint. And look at this, completely tiles. And you can do this as many times as you like, but when you build the first one, make sure it reaches a steady state before tacking on the next or the next. Otherwise you get to a situation where the stuff that this one has produced is being consumed by this heavy oil cracking and this heavy oil cracking because there's simply not enough steam to keep these one going because the heavy oil cracking that'll just consume everything but again the distance to this one you can see that's actually the saving grace because we're not really getting anything down here not a lot at least unless this one keeps flowing and this one will always be prioritized because it's so close and let's do the last one And now you can see, this is the full setup. If you want to do eight, you can do eight. If you want to do 16, you can do 16. You can build it as large as you want. The only things you have to keep in mind, you're going to need an offshore pump for each of these, pretty much, because it consumes 965 water for each unit. On top of that, you're also going to find a way to, to consume all this because this build producing a lot of petroleum. So it's producing, 1800 petroleum per second and good luck consuming that well i mean you can but you're gonna have to do it pretty much continuously with plastic production and uh, you have it something as useless now as our coal facility is now becoming in this case we now have if this works we have 180 coal inbound and we turn that into 1800 petroleum per second super useful and incredibly compact and as you can see the whole thing is operational nothing is nothing is not working and only this part that slightly flickers on and off and that's uh, how it should be 
that's going to be the end of this design. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Remember, this blueprint is available in the description below, so you can always grab those blueprints. I have for all of my masterclasses, I have blueprint books available. They are in the description. So do click the show more below so you can see the link to the paste bin and that's where I store the blueprint. If I still have your attention and you are still awake, then I think I've done my job well in terms of delivering a video that caught your, kept your attention for this long. So if you like the video, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below if you have ideas or comments for future videos. And if you want to see more videos like this, then hit the subscribe button so you get notified when new videos are coming on my channel. Also, if you want more Factorio content, then do check out my Twitch channel. I'm streaming Factorio Let's Play over on Twitch TV slash Nilaus. And I'm doing this on Tuesday, Thursdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Central European time. This is a different Let's Play than the one we have here on YouTube. And I always appreciate when people drop by because they, it's much easier to carry a conversation when you can chat live with someone. Keep an eye out for future masterclass videos on my channel. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, stay effective.